has worked as has worked as a veterinary surgeon at uh, different places. It's, it's our utmost pleasure to have you here, ma'am. Then we can. You may start your presentation now. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, ma'am. We can't hear you. Hello, you can hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Okay. So, one second. Um, I just want to say thank you very, very much. Um, for for inviting me. Where's my okay? One second. I just I just have to I just have a little problem trying to get the PowerPoint up. So we'd like to join the PowerPoint. Okay, I'm very sorry. I just keep talking while um, we're just trying to technically put on the the PowerPoint to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. So the this presentation is about the forensic cat and dog. Okay. Um, let me introduce myself first. And my name is um, Dr. Michelle Conley, and I qualified from UCD in Dublin, Ireland, um, 20 years ago. Okay, and since I qualified 20 years ago, I originally worked in large animals, and then I worked in um, small animals. So I've worked everywhere in the world, really, not everywhere, but from Canada to West Africa with horses and donkeys and chimpanzees, and basically. At the, at the bottom of all this is that we all have itchy cats and dogs. And this is what is our bread and butter, our gel bath of um, our console. Okay, are you hearing me? Okay, do you know if you can hear me? Yes, ma'am, I do. You can hear us? Okay, that's lovely. Okay, so unfortunately, I speak really, really fast. Okay, so... Please, like, feel free if you think if you feel if you think that um, you want me to slow down. I, I completely understand. All right. Okay. So, um, in our in our cases, basically, the way we learned in school or we learned in college is that we learned a disease, we learned the treatment, we learned to diagnose it, and it's all finished and put into a nice little box. Okay. But actually, in the reality, the reality is that. Um, the dog comes in and it can have many problems and unfortunately or fortunately the dog is attached to an owner right and they also have um, their their concerns and their frustrations right so today we're going to present this as um, as a real life situation so not your beautiful cases and this is my demodex and this is my flea allergic dermatitis we're just going to come in with your common dog and the common complaint is not only that my dog won't stop scratching all the time. He is scratching himself. He's scratching at night time because at night time we know that the the scratch reflex is higher, right? The man and his wife are, are probably fighting and they're all arguing and maybe you're not the first person that they've seen. Maybe they've gone and seen lots of um, people before you and so they're really frustrated, okay? And this is what they're going to come into. So you've got agitated pets and agitated owners. Okay, so then the other thing is my common one is my cat won't stop grooming and licking herself. And now she's lost all her hair and the complaint is that she might come in that she's vomiting. So they might present and say that, oh, my cat is vomiting all over our beautiful carpet. But actually she's vomiting up hair bones and we're going back again to our itchy uh, cat. Okay, so our itchy cat and dog. So they don't come in and tell you, oh, this is um, a lovely case of atopy, or this is a lovely case of demodex, um, you can fix it, right? That won't happen. Okay. So 
we're going to lots of things. Um, so in real life also might be many reasons why they're itchy, right? So are they itchy because it's a primary itchy disease or are they itchy because there's something else going on, right? And we have to go find out what, what is going on, okay? So you, you're the best. And what are you going to do, right? Um, are, are you going to, you know, how do you look at this? What do you do? Are you scratching your head and the dog is scratching him himself, okay? So there's no quick fix. I think you have to tell to the owner straight away that, you know, um, unless it's a very simple case, usually there's going to be a long, uh, long discussion and your itchy dog, as easy as it seems, is actually going to take quite a long consult, all right? So give yourself time, don't be saying in and out. Um, actually, you need to do lots of, um, you know, lots of investigation, um, lots of time taking history, and um, you have to do your good nice treatment, okay? So paritis, we all know, is the most commonly presented clinical sign in small animal practice, okay? It is therefore, it's very important that the vet understands why they're itchy, okay? And the vet, he has to, or she has to, she has to satisfy, satisfactorily manage it, okay? So again, like we said, you have your dog and he's itching and you have the client. And some clients, they can't take, they can't tolerate any itching. And you might think, oh, it's only a small itch, but actually if the client thinks that that is unbearable, or he's feeling the distress of his pet, you have to address this, okay? Um, so we all have different levels of perception, and we all have different levels of what we can tolerate. And for you, you might think, ah, that's only a little, little head scratch, but for them or the client, it might be something more deep, right? And it may not be you know, a serious concern, but it's what they think, okay? So um, we have to manage this for the patient and for the client. Okay, so paritis is a common feature in many diseases. Okay, so many diseases turn up in an itchy dog or cat. And because it's so common, it's probably the most common. Like even if somebody comes in for a vaccine, they'll always mention, you know, um, oh, and my dog is itchy. You know, so it's always, you'll see it all the time. And because you see it all the time, you shouldn't, you shouldn't take it like um, easily, right? Every new case, Every new dog, um, you know, you have to start from your basics. Don't think, oh, I know everything. Um, let's just give it a shot of corticosteroids and he stops itching, right? We're vets. We have to do things in a, a mindful way and we have to do things systematically, all right? So don't ever get complacent. Okay, so I, I know you're all, most of the audience is, um, you know, you're biting at the, the grip. You want to get out and do that and you want to work. So I hope that this, um, webinar is going to try and um, bring some light, right? So again, we're back to basics. We're sitting in our consult room uh, or standing, and we're what are we going to do, right? So we all know in from ourselves, not even just from our patients, that at night time the itch threshold is much lower, okay? And also, um, it's the itch threshold is much sorry, it's much lower when we have dry. So when we're hot, we feel more itchy, yeah. So when we're nice and cool we reduce our itch, our itchiness, right? And that's why lots of dogs, if they're covered in fleas, they're always sitting on the tiled area or they're outside sitting in the cold, right? And the owner might just come in and say, why he's always sitting there, why he's going? Because he's probably covered in fleas. And he wants to cool his body down to stop the itching, all right? Other things that causes our body to itch is when our skin is dehydrated, okay? And when it's dehydrated, um, it's more itchy, right? So this is good to remember when we're doing our treatment that we like to have nice hydrated uh, skin, okay? And we talk about it later, but this is involved in your shampoo. When we're stressed, like again, I hate to bring everything back to humans, but we can understand these stories. When we're stretched, uh, stressed, we scratch when like, oh. and dogs also when they're stressed or in cats they tend to over groom. Okay, cats if 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 a new cat comes into its territory and they can't handle it, it's a highly stressed cat. This cat is going to start licking, 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 right? And that's how cats show when they're itchy, or not. It may look like it's itchy, 
that's how they show they, they don't scratch dogs back the cats grew and dogs also when they're bored or they're home or you know not mostly because they're stressed but because they're bored they'll have a tendency to start chewing right so the owner might come in and say he's, he's scratching he's chewing his front leg he's all the time chewing what's wrong and this actually might be a boredom factor so maybe you need to bring him out for a walk or entertain him or make his life a little bit more stimulating right and you have to find all this out when you're doing your your um, history and your clinical exams right we'll talk about that in a minute so when we have an itch we all want to scratch it right and when we scratch it we might they believe that maybe you're temporarily incapacitating this itch so we're calming down that but when you're scratching you're going to cause some inflammation and then this is going to go and make the itch worse okay we all know this so it's called the itch scratch cycle probably the main thing of treatment is in order to find out what this itch or the scratch or the paralysis and then we try and remove it or treat it and then um often we have to try and break this itch scratch cycle maybe we have like a pyoderma or a generalized edema of x and he's itchy yes treat the lethal and treat the mange and yes we can give you know, bacterial treatment but we might need to break this itch scratch cycle okay and that's when we're talking about the steroids okay so what else um sorry for that okay our clients um we have to always consider our clients don't ever judge your clients pockets you'll be very surprised the people with the deepest pockets um may not be who you think they are right so you you know, and this goes for any, any, um, any, any case, right? You give them their options and don't be a dictator and don't judge. You say, this is option A, B, and C, which would you like, right? And to say, yes, gold standard might be this. You know, maybe they choose they can't do that or maybe they want to do option C first and then if it doesn't work, do option A, right? So we, we have to educate them. We have to um, give them their their choices and they have to do um their they have to pick the choices we can guide them all right but as long as they have informed information then it's their choice okay so lots of clients depends again maybe this is going on for a long 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 time uh, maybe you're going to do um you know come back and repeat and you know just be honest tell them that um you know he's had this itching for seven months this is not going to get away it's going to go away in one week okay so you tell them, give them a clear insight to what you think, right? So in the investigation procedures, we can do, thank God, in the um, skin bottom, it's really we can do in our own consultation room and we can do it at very cheap prices, right? Um, and we can really, we can get to know that results very quickly. Um, and this is good for things like if you have sarcoptic mange, which is a zoonotic, we don't have to wait for a lab results, we can straight away you know, tell the owners that this is a zoonosis and, you know, and have to do what appropriate treatment to do. Okay, so it says there are monetary and client commitments. If, for example, and I'm talking too much now, um, we're talking about, um, you know, are they going to do what you advise them to do? You know, are they going to give the medicines? At, you know, sometimes you need six weeks antibiotics. Will they do six weeks? Are, you, are they going to commit if you need to do like a food if they have a food allergy and need to do a food restriction diet, like, will they do that, right? So you have to, again, speak and educate the people and tell them why. It's not like you're, it's competition you say now, don't give this, don't give that, and don't give, and then they're sneakily doing it. You have to tell them why you're doing this and explain, right? So get your client to come with you, explain what you're doing, manage their expectations, okay? There's no magic treatment. And this, he's not gonna come in, the owner is agitated, um, dog is agitated, they want to go home and get it fixed now, right? It's not going to happen. So this may take time, especially if it's going on for a long time. Um, sometimes we never can cure the pet, right? Sometimes he might be on, um, you know, the management will not cure. So, or maybe it's a seasonal thing and it comes back all the time. Again, you tell them this and they're like, oh yeah. So then next year, they're not coming in, knocking on your door, yeah, shouting cool. and and giving out they're going to say oh yes this is seasonal she did warn me about this and now we're here back again right so happy clients right and it may be a client just like i said so this is very obvious but this is like this is your bread and butter 
the most common causes of bronchitis is exoparasites, right? And if you don't see them, you would be very silly not to treat them, right? Um, fleas, okay, fleas, 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 right? But there's obviously other ectoparasites. But for me, like I would always, they're guilty until proven innocent, okay? So um, treat for fleas and then, <laughs> uh, treat for fleas and then you'll, um, at least you know that's them, right? So, very, very common thing again is our crisis, right? Don't be fooled just because they're scratching one thing, it actually may be systemic diseases, right? And I always say that your skin is a reflection of your health, all right? And for example, think of all those adult onset uh, DMAD X dogs, right? So, those mostly those stray dogs or street dogs that you see. And they're got adult um, demodicosis, right? So, what else is going on? You know, are they malnourished? Do they have a reduced immune system? Do they have something else, right? So, um, it's a, maybe the demodex is only there because they have other underlying problems, right? So, we have to think this. And for example, last week we had a street dog come in, and, and last, last week, Last week we had a street dog come in, and sorry, Scott, and the, um, he was really, really malnourished, and he had loads of generalized demodex, and we were thinking, oh, okay, poor thing, this is because he's a street dog and he's not eating, right? So you'd be a fool to go straight in, do your skin scrape, and treat for the mange. When actually, what he had when he did a clinical exam, he had a big, large growth in his neck, right? And he couldn't eat, and that's why he was malnourished. And who knows where he came from? We don't know. But then the malnourished left the reduced immune system, and then he has mange, right? So yes, the poor dog has mange, but actually he has much more serious conditions, right? Okay. So the common causes of systemic diseases are hyperthyroidism in cats, uh, diabetes. You can all read these. Um, lots of tumors, or some tumors and uh, cancers, are associated with pruritus. Um, drugs, um, chronic renal failure, right, and hepatic disease. Okay, so interesting. Um, and this is another side issue. Um, no, I want to be an audio. Um, as a side issue, the okay, sorry, I'm getting a little message here. I'm very sorry for being interrupted. So when we have systemic disease, usually our crisis is generalized. Okay. And if you had something like osteoarthritis, right? The, it's an old dog, he might be biting at his hips. You might confuse this for something else, but actually he might be just saying he's got pain, right? Or if he's biting at his carpus or carpi, this might be osteoarthritis, right? So just keep your mind open, right? We know it's probably ectoparasites. There is many other cases that it says something else. Okay. Um, systemic disease. Okay, we said this already, just I can't say it enough times. We have to think about your ectoparasites. Okay, most common one, most itchiest disease is your circumstances. Right, and lots of people say, Oh, he's got scabies, the scabies and the left are different. Yeah, I know you know all this, and it's like teaching you how to boil an egg, but um, Sarcoptes is zoonotic, right? And um, Demodex is not okay. Cayetiella, which is your walking dandruff, and sometimes it's mistaken for just you think it's dandruff, um, that's also zoonotic lice. You all know lice, Demodex. Um, <coughs> Your fleas, okay, flea allergic dermatitis is the most common, common thing, right? So, like I always say, for example, you might have two dogs and they'll say, well, they're living together, one has got loads of fleas and, the, and nothing, he's just occasionally scratching, and the other one has got loads of fleas, or maybe even just one or a few fleas seen, and he's got pruritus everywhere, right? So, he has an allergy, okay? It's like me and you with mosquitoes. We could be sitting beside each other and you could get bitten by a mosquito. And I could get bitten by a mosquito and you won't know. And I have this big, huge lump, right? So some dogs have allergies to fleas, okay, more than those. 
bookworm allergies, ringworms. Ringworms in cats is very, very terrific. Okay. Um, and then we have our weird and wonderful contact allergies, okay, which is a bit hard to find, but you know, I know you have some woods here, Chilowney Woods, and they had a wood dog, and he, they just built a beautiful kennel for him around this wood. And of course, he came in with brightness everywhere, right? So that was a, a nice example of a contact allergy. And needless to say, he was rehomed to another nice kennel, right? And um, usually, if you have contact allergies, it's the area where, um, which is in contact, as it says, okay, um, that you have all your prices. So usually in the groin area, the hairless area. Um, but if you use shampoos and we have a contact allergy to shampoos, um, it may be like a generalized process. Okay. So food allergies, food allergies. This, um, how common is food allergies? In UK, it was more common. <laughs> And so food allergies, let's go back. Um, usually if they have food allergies, they'll show GI tract signs, okay? And if we have um, inhalation allergies like dust or pollens, this can be usually seasonal or maybe you're in a dusty house and you need to, to treat your environment, okay? So um, again, this is, this is often confused as pruritus and it's not pruritus, okay? Um, and I don't know if you've seen this or not, but in cats, they're usually got two bilateral alopecia areas along the sides of their flanks um, are usually they're over grooming and they're growing right um, in the medium aspect so this is from stress okay cats are super sensitive and for example if you had a cat that's indoors or doesn't have much variety in its environment and you normally for example work between nine and five o'clock and then on a Friday night, you decide that you weren't going to go home or you were going to go for a coffee or something. You can home at six. In the cat's little world, you are its world, right? And then these changing routines are very, very stressful for some cats. And for that reason, they start licking, 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 right? So they're trying to calm down, maybe like a human sucking their tongue. They're, they're doing this as a, you know, a, a stress relief, okay? And then normally the owner says, no, 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 we never see her looking. Their hair is all falling out. Because you have to remember, cats, they're silent, they're secret groomers. Okay, so they might be doing it at night. They're very clever cats. And they might be doing it at night. And actually, they are grooming, right? And you can do a little test later and show the owner that they're actually grooming, that, that they're doing this. Okay, so in your detailed history, you have to ask everything. Like, has there been changes? Is there a new baby in the house? Did you bring a new pet into the house? For cats, right? These are all very important for their psychotic dermatitis. And we said already, your dogs, when they're bored, they just start chewing their own legs or licking, 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 right? And you have to do a proper exam and see is there a cause? Like, there, is there, you know, like a nail bed infection? Um, is there arthritis? What age they are? Um, why they're chewing? And you might find out that it's just psychotic, okay? Which is actually harder to make sure. Okay, so our investigations. What are we going to do? Okay, so remember, pruritus is a clinical sign. Okay, it's not a disease, and we have many causes. Okay, and the owner might just say my cat is scratching, but actually maybe the cat or the dog has a systemic disease. Don't forget that. Right. Um, obtain the history. Okay, what are you going to ask them? What questions do you need to ask them? And you have to take your time. Right, the examining the dog is actually quite quick, and you spend more time just. They just are listening and talking to the owners, right? And sometimes the owners feel like they're maybe a judge and you're asking a million questions. But just explain, I'm sorry, the more you tell me, the easier it will be to find out what's going on, right? So they, nobody should be interrogated, but, you know, bring them, again, explain why you're doing this, yeah? You don't need to know everything about their diet and everything, but you do, you need to know why, okay? Is the patient sick? Um, if he has obvious diabetes, he'll have a history of diabetes, okay? Um, how, how long has the, the prices been there? Okay, if it's chronic, it may be a systemic disease, okay? I had a dog in the other day, we had, and it was seven months itching, right? So it was an old dog, and yeah, of course, they can just, you know, treat it and with steroids and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, explain to the owner, look, this is a long time, um, long time sick, and your skin is a reflection again of your health, your general health, and if 
if it's okay, we'll do a blood test and then, you know, I see how things are. And it turned out everything was fine. But the owner was more happy to find out that everything was fine. You know, so sometimes we think, oh, blood result. Um, oh, no, there's nothing wrong. Kidneys are fine. Oh, no, liver is fine. You know, this is really good news. And remember that the owner is happy for that, right? So keep the date, we're all relieved. And now we can treat it as itchy skin, okay? Was the cat or dog, were they in kennels recently? Did they go to groomers? Were they like in a show? Do they go roaming on the streets? Um, you know, has the people in the house, are they itchy? You don't need to do an exam of the human, but have they got any lesions? Maybe like sarcoptics, flea bites around their ankles. Um, you know, if they're wearing white socks, will they see red marks on their socks? Um, that, that's um, flea poo, okay? Um, is it seasonal? Did it happen this time last year? You know, what season is it? Um, like summer obviously is more prone to brightness than winter. Again, could be lots of factors. Could be to do with like environmental and also it can be to do with um, like it's hotter, right? We're all itchy and hot, okay? Um, parasites, okay, this time of year, the parasites are more active and um, fleas and will they come again, you know, next year? So again, you're warning them and telling them and then they're not disappointed, yeah? They think, oh yeah, she did tell me that. Um, did they use a shampoo, new shampoo? Are they using all these dry shampoos? Are they putting perfume on the bags? Um, lots of weird and wonderful um, accessories out there now. And a lot of them are designed for the humans. We think, oh, this dog, he smells like roses, right? But actually, it is not the chemicals that maybe don't go with the dog's skin. You know, they smell beautiful. Right? This is not good. Um, what, what else? Have they been using? Sometimes if we just use steroids, okay, and this resolves the brightness, this might mean that um, it's more like an allergic call. Okay, so has he been to some other vets? What treatment they gave? Um, did they use steroids? Was he good on steroids? And when he stopped, what happened? You know, just find out everything. Tell them to come in with all their history and bring whatever paperwork or any samples that they used, okay? Um, well, oh yeah, the dogs. Dogs, people are always thinking, Oh, my dog, what can my dog give to me, right? So they're afraid that they might catch something from the dog and cats. And actually, dogs that sleep, which is now more and more common, in the bed or on the bed with their owners, they're more likely to have um, severe ATP, okay, or like a certain skin disease. And cats, cats that sleep with their owners and everybody wants the cat to cuddle up with them, they're more likely to get asthma. So the human is more likely to cause problems, it goes both ways. But like people forget that actually we we can cause problems to our pets okay so you know it's up to you how much you want to tolerate the dog in or the cat in the bed but remember that we can cause and may be the cause of some of these problems right and um some species like cavalier king charles they have this phantom itching right so they're they're actually not scratching but they're um like maybe a little bit away from their head and neck and they're scratching scratching like this right so it's called phantom scratching and that's to do with um, uh, Kyrie like from malformation, okay, and stringomyelia, which is remember as well. The owner might come in and say, He's scratching, scratching, but observe, okay, so do your observations. He's not actually scratching, he's phantom scratching, okay. And uh, okay, so I said before, remember that dogs scratch and cats they lick, right? And don't forget, cats are sleep with okay. So, next, um, do your clinical exam, right? Don't Always, always do your clinical exam. Uh, like, don't ever think, oh, um, we'll just skip that. I know exactly what it is. Look, I found the flea. Okay, there might be fleas, but there might be some fleas. It's called the red herring, right? Uh, oh, my internet. So, um, sorry, I think you're having problems finding me. The prior medicine, okay. So, um, do your clinical exam, right? If you suspect that there is um, an, an underlying disease, the stem stem, do your blood tests, do your renal profile, do your liver profile, and do your hematology, do your blood glucose for diabetes, right? Base it on your clinical exam. And don't forget tumors, some tumors they have associated with itching, okay? So, visual exam, right? Simple. Look for your fleas, look for your lice, look for your mites, okay? 
And you can see this with your own eyes, right? So again, cost effective, quick, easy to find out, right? You part the hair and examine them. Some people say maybe you should take five minutes to examine it, right? Use a flea comb, okay? If you can't find the flea comb, go to use the I go to a beauty salon and buy one of those nip combs, right? And you comb the hair and you may not find a flea. And what you can find is you can find your flea poo or flea feces, okay? And how the owner says, no, 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 that dust jerky is rolling in the garden, all right? And how you know. So you put your flea poo, probably all know this, on your tissue paper and you wet tissue paper and you just give it a little gentle squeeze and the flea poo is red, okay? So your dirt or your soil is gray or brown or whatever black. But when it's red, this is when the flea bites the, the animal and ingests the blood and has a poo, right? So this is your nice, simple, quick, easily way of showing that there's a flea, right? Number one, don't forget fleas. Check their ears if they're scratching at the head. Maybe they've got ear mites, maybe they've got otitis externa. Check their anal bands, they're dragging their bum on the floor and they're scratching, scratching, okay? Maybe they don't have worms, which is what everybody thinks. Maybe they have anal band infection and infection. Scratching their face, maybe they have facial fold dermatitis, okay, especially in pugs, and their tail folds, okay. Um, we can see that animals are wonderful, right? Their saliva, when they're licking, licking, grooming, they show um, a red stain, right? So if they're licking their paws, they're telling us where to look, right? If they're licking at their, um, uh, like we said already, maybe they've got pain, they're showing us where to look. If they've got flea allergic dermatitis, you'll see saliva stains along their, um, their flanks or the, the thoracolumbar areas, okay? And you'll see the wet hair, you'll see what they're chewing, chewing, chewing. And again, usually around the lumbar area, because that's where it's easy for them to bite and gnaw it, okay? And maybe they're licking and at their mammary glands, maybe they have mastitis, okay? So why are they things? Really, we have to find out why, okay? Um, then we said again, the area will be shown and they're stressed animals, they have certain areas, okay? Um, when they're, so if they've got prolonged psychotic licking or chewing, or licking is in your cat, really, they'll have licked granulomas, okay? And you might have to treat that as a secondary problem. And sometimes cats might come into senses because they're, they're coughing or vomiting up hair bundles, okay? So this isn't the gastric problem. This is more likely this is a pruritus problem, okay? So they're licking and chewing, eating those hairs and vomiting them up. So we have to look for what, why is this? Okay, question is why? Um, hair combing, you said look for your um, flea feces and also your fungal test. Okay, very, very simple. You get a nice piece of paper and you just get some hairs and brush them off in your nice clean comb or your nice clean toothbrush and you put them into this piece of paper and send them off to the lab. Okay, so a KOH fungal test. Yeah, okay, might not identify everything, but it'll just say positive or negative. And you'll know your guide is again where to go. Your trichogram, pulling your hair, right? So it'll tell us if if there's pruritus, okay, not hair fall, or maybe the owner says, oh, like your cat again, all the hair's fallen out. But you'll say that they're licking, they're licking, they're causing it because the tips of the hairs will be all ragged when you look under the microscope. Okay, if for your your kaiyatiana, your walking dandruff, you just get your cellophane or cellophane and put it on the dandruff and put it on your microscope microscope, and then look and you'll see your mites. Right? Actually, your skin sometimes is frustrating, but actually it can be very very um, satisfying, right? Because you can get results and you're maybe not always scratching your own head. Okay, skin scrapes. We all know skin scrapes, yeah. So skin scrapes, remember, you have to go deep skin scrape for Demodex, okay? And for um, sarcopathies, it's superficial. And do it in several areas, you just don't do one, all right? And massage, massage on your deep skin scrapes, massage until you get your blood up, and use your liquid paraffin as a mount, okay? And again, lovely, everyone gets so excited, I think, as long as I'm still doing it, I get excited when I find, you know, sarcopathies or Demodex. And it's like, yes, yes, I was right. Okay, so really, really good feeling. And yeah, we like to see them running around on the microscope slide. And when you use our skin scrapes, it's good for diagnosis, but also good for monitoring, right? So when do we stop our treatment for Demodex? Uh, we always stop it after the second negative skin scrape, two weeks past apart, right? So if you've got two negative skin scrapes and they're two weeks apart, then we can stop, all right? Um, I used to 
views in several areas and you know if it's a negative and you don't find it negative is not negative okay making careful homing that is okay it's good okay so negative is not negative it just means that you didn't see him in that area so if your juvenile dog comes in and he's got lesions all over his face and his front legs and he's a nice age and you didn't find the index you know what i say you wouldn't it wouldn't be harm to treat for the index okay or get them to come back and repeat it again it was you know use your signalment use your history use your clinical exam right so negative is not a negative okay. here's bobs you said about this you can look for ear wipes okay and you can also look for if you stain your your swabs from your ears you can find yeast and cockeye right so again it'll help you direct you in your treatment right is this a yeast infection is there bacteria is there mites right and and that's really really nice and simple everything is really simple to do right predictioners we should we sh like you shouldn't be lazy we should be doing these these are simple tests the owner is happy because they come in they're frustrated they see you being positive they see you do something you're taking action I'm very happy to sit in the waiting room for another few minutes while you're looking down a microscope and um, they came a long way they're probably you know sitting every night looking at their cat or dog and they'll get frustrated and they're very happy um, to have immediate um, results and they're very happy that you're you're doing something not just you know throwing steroids at them and say come back next week right so very proactive um, and and be that way histology now we're going to your labs and this is when you're you're scratching your head and you're thinking well what is it and so very good for your your tumors maybe neoplasia um it does have a place but we don't do it often enough maybe you're not often um but you should consider doing it when you're stuck and you don't know what else is happening right so very good for immune mediated disorders as well and now we're in intradermal tests so it's not available in the fall but you know some of the you may go outside and you need to know what is around and you can do this to see what allergens you're susceptible some of this is controversial and some people think it's you know it doesn't work in every case um and you know i think you have to take it with uh, caution but they are available and um, it is a tool that we can use okay our diets you can just do a simple if you think that it is a food allergy do your own you know maybe we hear in the fall we again we don't have our um, all our specialized diets so we do but maybe they're not always available um what you can do is you can do your own hypoallergenic based diets right as long as it's it's, it's um a novel protein and you do strictly strictly on that novel protein diet okay for six weeks and you have to have the whole family it has to be a family um, um commitment right so no kind mom and dad being really really good and the son is there sneaking and giving them biscuits and some chicken from this table or whatever right so you know you have to have a, a, a discussion with the family and a commitment from everybody right and and then when you have done your hypoallergenic diet and the price has stopped you can do a test if you want and reintroduce the foods and then see you know like try it on see does it come back you know and sometimes when you have your hypoallergenic diet after time they build up a tolerance to this okay and you have to try and change again so it's a long term this is your we're talking about a client commitment this is definitely your client commitment okay so management of prices so we have to manage our prices right and um, we um it's not always treatment you know sometimes just tell you you know what might be on some low dose of steroids and uh, might be on low dose of steroids for life if that's what it needs to be right or we might have to do pulse therapy so as long as you know that maybe this time every year um we have to you know go on idols and taper it down and then maybe it'll come back again and um, problem with seasonal arthritis is that eventually um the seasons go out and sometimes it can be all year round but again educate your clients okay you do your things you do your reading you studied for a long time in college you know it you know so spread the word okay um first step first step the management of prices is elimination of active parasites okay just treat them for fleas you would be very very silly not to treat them for fleas okay so use your topical solutions um you know whatever way you want to treat the fleas 
you do, right? But when we treat for fleas, we don't forget, you have to treat not just the animal, you have to treat the environment, all right? So all of be having your, your medicine on your dog, but where the fleas coming from, right? And you have to repeatedly treat the environment. Also, you have to treat any income tax. And cats, unfortunately, are again, um, very, very, people don't want to treat cats or they don't know. Be very careful about treating cats for fleas, but also cats, cat fleas can live happily on the dog. Um, so always be aware of the neighbors' cats coming in and as well. Right? So you're in contact, your environment and your patient. Um, okay, so here we go. We're going to talk about ivermectin, right? So in, in UK, we can't use ivermectin unless we get an informed consent for off-label use from the client. So that means we have to tell the clients all of these side effects and we have to tell them that there is a risk and I can only use this when you sign this form saying that you know everything. This doesn't happen in Nepal and for this reason we use um, it a lot more willy-nilly. Okay? But I've met them as a serious drug and I know you all know. Overdose is one thing but also they have um, an MDR gene that's set. Okay? So they, some dogs are more susceptible. So even the other day, I, yeah, I gave out Mechon and the owner came in and said that he's been sleeping and was a little bit more lethargic and for sure, I don't know for sure, but I, I was very suspicious that it was um, a reaction to Ivan Mechon, right? So on his, um, for this dog, like he's, he, in my view, would never ever get Ivan Mechon again, right? Okay, so common um, side effects or common, common clinical signs. Um, Hydriasis, depression, drooling, vomiting, taxia, tremorous disorientation. Okay, blindness. I'm sure you all know that I can actually can cause blindness. Um, and leads to coma and death, right? So it's a serious drug, and because we use it often, doesn't make it less serious. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so now this is, this is just. For treatment of the index, right? If you can see there, it's highlighted. It says daily, right? So if I'm treating range, and this is from the BSAVA formula, right? This is what they recommend. This is their doses. So sarcoptes, it says every two weeks for four to six weeks, okay? For Dimodex, it's daily doses, right? So one shot of ivermectin and come back again after a week, and another shot of ivermectin is not going to get rid really of my generalized hemodiagnosis, okay? You have to be daily, and you have to tell them it may take a long time, right? Depends how long they have had it. And again, repeat, repeat your skin scrapes. Alternative to ivermectin is your amitraz washes, okay? Again, be careful. These are all very, very highly, uh, not gentle um, medicines. Use it outdoors, ventilate the area, wear gloves, wash your splashes, okay? So again, do my skin scrapes until you have two negatives skin scrapes two weeks apart and then that's when I would stop, all right? So if you stop too soon or you're just looking at them and you say, yeah, he looks good, no. It takes you only a few moments, more than minutes to do your skin scrape, okay? Prevecto, we all know Prevecto is new to the market, um, really, really nice, okay? Um, a little bit expensive, but depends on your clients, maybe they're happy to use that rather than using your toxic ivermectin or your, um, your washes. Always treat any coexisting um, bacterial and fungal infections. Okay, and please, please remember about your third generation Capisporins. Every loves them because they work. Okay, but if we all use them all the time, we're going to have problems. So go. I always start with a beautiful like penicillin base, and that's lovely, right? And why not? Why you need to go for top shelf? Okay. So for our prices, effective control of prices. It's dependent upon to identify as a cause and remove the cause if you can. Okay? And think about your allergens, your stress factors, and don't forget your systemic diseases. Okay. Steroids. Steroids, steroids, steroids. Okay, so we all know that we can have iatrogenic cushions. And steroids, we have to be very, very careful. We, if we use them for a long time, we have to taper them down. 
and if we um, if you use them for a long time, you have to be aware of um, Cushing's or Cushingoid um, syndromes. Okay, and you reduce your immune system. So tell your owners again their choice. Okay, um, I have no problem um, using a low dose and and to the lowest effective dose um, of steroids if the dog's quality of life needs it. Okay, so um, and I always say to the owner maybe you know this might have some side effects on him, but he quality of life is better, right? So there's a balance, inform the owner, they decide. And this is from Jill Madison, Professor Jill Madison, she's a professor of um, general practice at the Royal Veterinary College in, in England. And um, she, does, she's actually really good. She does lots of things, but uh, amongst her achievements is that she's actively involved in continuing professional development at the Royal Veterinary College. And these are doses that she recommends. So sometimes when we look at steroids, we're a little baffled and we don't know what to do okay so for dogs you can all read this anti-inflammatory dose of 0 0.5 to 1 mg per kg per day okay and in your immunosuppressive doses it's 2 to 4 mg per kg per day okay in cats your anti-inflammatory is 2 mg per kg per day and your immunosuppressive is 4 so basically cats dose is twice the dose for dogs right so remember that it's very simple so try and remember that and we said um, about you want to do remission versus maintenance. Okay, daily dose, it should be 0 0.5 to 2 mg per kg to induce remission in dogs. Again, cats is twice. Then use alternative daily dose for maintenance. Okay, so when we want to avoid our pushings, we we try and use a day on, a day off to rest. Okay, prednisone dose must be less than 1 mg per kg to rest our adrenals on the off days. Okay, so, you know, Try and taper it down. There's no set rule if it's over weeks, months, depends on your case, depends how chronic it is, um, but go down to the lowest effective dose, okay? For corticosteroids, do we use it once a day or twice a day? It doesn't really matter, okay? But we, if it's more than seven days on corticosteroids, we have to taper. You know, if you stop suddenly, you'll also have problems. Taper to 0 0.25 mix per cakes every other day, before stopping, or at least 0 0.5, okay, in a dog. Taper by increasing the, the days rather than from BID to SID, okay, so from increasing to every other day to every third day, right? And again, this takes time to explain to the owner, but they're usually very, very happy, all right? Um, my own dog, this is a small little story, my own dog, um, he has bites, chronic. So I give him on steroids. Lovely, steroids, beautiful, cheap and cheerful. Okay, only a few rupees for some steroids. And what they do? Obviously, the side effects of steroids is PU, PD, and PP, polyphagia. So my dog decided he's really hungry, and my cheap packet of, of steroids cost me the price of a local chicken. So he decided to go to the neighbors and feed himself. And so that's my little warning to the owners, um, is that always tell them the side effects of the steroids. Okay, so um, your dog will drink more, pee more, and be always hungry. So some people are very shocked by how, how much they're drinking and peeing and they get worried. So if you tell them, then they, they'll be fine. And maybe tell the neighbours to hide the chickens. Okay, so nearly at the end. So I'm sorry if I'm being a bit, um, a bit fast. Or, but, I, you know, basically all these notes I can give to anybody who requests them. Um, or you can request them to the IDSA. Okay, so um, the other things we have to use. So, okay, we all know steroids, they stop paritis, but we want to use the lowest dose of steroids that we can, right? So we use other things to try and reduce the dose of steroids. Antihistamines, these are, they may work in some cases and they may reduce um, um, the dose of corticosteroids, but there's actually very little evidence okay so um you can use them but i think don't if i was going to spend my clients money um, i might spend it on other things or i might use something that's more convincing okay for example evening primrose oil it's really beautiful as a supplement omega threes and sixes but don't forget your ratios so it should be a ratio of omega six to omega three should be a ratio of six to one right so you know again don't buy spend their money, not your money, spend their money wisely. So buy good quality, right? And buy 
um, everything has omega-3 and 6 in it, but make sure you have nice ratios and um, like good quality supplements, yeah. Um, aloe vera, we talked about the hydration. So sometimes if they have one a local um, lesion, maybe you need to put some aloe vera on it and rehydrate the skin and stop that itch, okay. Coconut oil. Um, Coconut oil, be very careful if they put loads and loads of coconut oil. And what we do in humans, and it's fine in humans, but in humans, we don't lick it, right? We're not going to eat the coconut oil off it. And in dogs, they might, depends on how much, it's unlikely, but they might lick a lot. And then if they're licking, they might get gastro, right? So I, I wouldn't really say too much about coconut oil. Um, Pseudocreme, we have a product called Pseudocreme in UK, and it's lovely for humans again, and we put it all on. Um, but, and people put it on their dog. Uh, again, the dog lick it, right? So the, the bottom line is that um, what's suitable for humans isn't always suitable for dogs. Okay? So um, when the dogs lick it, it has a zinc oxide and it may be toxic in large doses. Okay? Um, if we know that we have um, an allergen or we have hypersensitivity, um, we can use hypersensitization, right? So we can use our food trials, we can use our intradermal testing, we can observe. Um, we might think that, okay, now it's, it's um, dusty, or I had one dog that was sensitive to um, food mites, okay, so um, well, this is a different story. So he was sensitive to food mites, and what they do is they had to repackage all their dog food into smaller, they divide their dog food in smaller quantities, repackage it in so that there would be no food mites, okay, and that took quite, quite a while to find out why he had allergies all over his face all the time, it was from his, his food, okay, so um, you know, just be aware. What else? Um, we have to tell them, the owner, what causes the paritis and how can we um, avoid it. Um, it might be a car and um, it might be, you know, if it's, if it's fleas, we're going to try, try and flee, treat our fleas and we have to do it all the time, right? And, yeah, and I said the in context and the environment and you have to do it repeatedly. It's not a one off and then they come back next month and they're screaming and shouting at you. And you're like, that's because you didn't treat the environment and that's because you didn't treat the dog repeatedly. So lots of things like communication, we can actually um, resolve lots of um, confrontation. Okay? Shampoos, lots and lots of nice shampoos now. Right? Um, maybe not so commonly available here, but they will come. Okay, so we're back, they have lovely shampoos and they're all pH suitable for the dog. So we said earlier about all those perfumey shampoos. Um, you know, sometimes they're there to facilitate the client, right? So the dog smells beautiful, but they're maybe not so nice for the dog. So, you know, again, buy quality, uh, recommend quality, okay? We're back, they have Allerdom, Allerum, and they have Episodes, which are really nice for the itchy dog. Okay, so I'm sorry, I think I was like a little bit like a, a train. It's going a bit fast. Uh, my, my, um, so basically to summarize, okay, consider your case, consider the etiology of the psoriasis. Not all cases are the same. Like you might think, oh, another itchy dog. It's not an itchy dog. Okay, there are different reasons. Um, avoid, if you find out what causes it, avoid these factors. Educate your client. Okay. Give reasonable time scale. Tell them this won't take a long time. If you say that on the first day, they'll be happy. If you don't say that, and you just give an injection and here take these tablets and don't say come back and don't say you know uh, no follow-up um, and then they'll come back after a few weeks and they're not happy or maybe they won't come back at all right so speak communicate um inform them of chronic cases and maybe that they might reoccur maybe a relapse you know discuss with your client the treatment versus management you may not cure your dog okay you might just have to give them a good quality of life and manage them and bring your client with you, talk to them, tell them what you're doing, tell them there's no magic treatment, no magic tricks, and manage their expectations. Okay, so talk, talk, talk. And itchy dog, you know, uh, if you were in a hurry, you know, just make sure you're not going to have them in and out in a few minutes. You want to take your time, and you know, there's lots to be learned from your very good first consultation. Right, so spend your time. The owner will be more than happy um, to talk to you, and they're like, oh they're very happy that somebody's taking them serious because sometimes maybe they're a little bit um, thinking, I don't get you. But actually, you know, it's very frustrating for the client and the dog, okay? So, ye, ye 
like of, you know the future students we are the future okay of this veterinary profession and like base your treatment on facts okay do your history do your clinical exam and do your investigations and like have facts right and manage the, the, the their expectations use medicines responsibly okay weigh your patients do your mix for pigs nothing like have a nice little weighing scales you don't have anything fancy put the human on it then put the human and the dog on it and then do your subtractions and you have your weight right don't be guessing you like you spent how many years in college right you should be proud and you should stand up for your profession and so do it properly right we don't be saying it's a big dog we give a big dose do like do it scientifically all right um, use your right length of treatment okay if you have a secondary pyoderma you might need six weeks and i'll tell the owner you need, might need six weeks but we're only going to be two weeks and have you come back and we'll see how it goes because maybe we have to change it and if i tell them that and they come back in two weeks and i change it they're like oh she's used to that okay so you know there shouldn't be any problem really um use your culture and sensitivity if you need to right um, if you have chronic cases and they're just not working, you know, just do one more step into your culture and sensitivity for secondary white pyodermis, okay? Use, don't use your top shelf, okay? Stay away from your third generation Capricorns. Start with your basis, okay? So, like, staph is your most common bacterial infection and lovely, they react to penicillins, okay? So use them while you're going in and going for top shelf, right? Um, Repeat your skin scrapes, right? Recheck your clients. And it gives you a chance to alter your treatment. So when you're saying come back and you've already planted that seed that maybe we're coming back for a checkup, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm not going to give you six weeks and say to the loop. Um, you know, we're going to keep communicating, right? And then, oh, I'm not happy. Let's change it to something else. They're like, okay, good. She's proactive again. Okay. Um, Sometimes just a phone call, you know, maybe they come from farm and just give them a ring and they're so happy. You gained, you're just coming out of college, okay? And you gained so much knowledge by that phone call. They said, oh my God, he's worse, not better. You're like, oh, okay, that didn't work. So, you know, they're happy. You're caring and you're following them up. And, you know, obviously it's, it's obviously not costing money either. So it's just the price of the phone call. You're learning and they're happy, right? So ring, ring your clients. Um, and you get feedback back. Again, your client, everybody is happy with that, okay? Be aware regarding ivermectin, right? Be very careful with ivermectin. Um, you know, you will get caught and you will have a reaction. And um, I, I sometimes I just would say to a client, you know, this is a very strong medicine. And um, some dogs have, you know, tell them have reactions to this. If you see any signs, you know, um, please just let me know, right? Especially if you're on your daily oral um, ivermectin doses, right? Just stop the dog and tell me right and then they're like oh again she did tell me that something might um, go wrong right so you told them something right and you know, inform them use your steroids very well taper them down if you've been on it for more than seven days and um you know try and do the lowest effective dose and like don't let the owners be running around going up and down up and down communicate stay in contact with them what dose you're on where are we now um, and, and and be careful of your side effects okay um, and maintain your 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 dignity as vets you know you worked hard and to keep up the profession and you, you know you are the future um you all have beautiful exciting career paths in front of you and um you know like we're all vets we all work together and we all have to be you know uh, have integrity okay um and be proud of what you do, but always be humble and always learn from what doesn't work and learn from your mistakes. And um, remember, we don't know everything. We can't cure everything, but we can only do our best, okay? And it, a lot of you might find this when you're out first a bit overwhelming. Now, don't worry, there's lots of people. Everybody come out first and we all were overwhelmed. And, um, you know, talk to people, ask people, um, tell people that you're, you're stumped, this is a bit difficult, ask for help. People, they're they're delighted to give information, right? Some people can't stop talking like myself. Okay, so just talk and support and help each other, right? And um, I just want to say thank you all for listening and that I hope uh, you understood uh, what I said. Okay, so that's, that's it, the end. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your nice presentation. Mm -hmm. uh,
we got very a few, much. We got a few questions. Would you like to address them? No, please. Yes, please. One is after how much administration ivermectin toxicity occurs? Oh, you, if you after I've had ivermectin toxicity after one injection, okay? Um, yeah, so just be careful, depends on your doses, make your doses correct, right? And um, some dogs, as we know, if they don't have if they have the MDR gene mutation, they're more susceptible, okay? So those dogs are like your um. Uh, herding dogs like your Shelties and your Collies, and, like some breeds, okay. But um, any dog really, right? So just be careful, just be very careful. I've met them, I live in fear of I've met them. Okay, thank and you. The next so question what? is What are the common food allergy that cause oh. pruritus in cat and dog? Oh, yeah, good question. Depends on the dog, okay. And what is common. I suppose it would be like I I don't know right, but mostly we feed our dogs chicken or chicken based diets. Okay, um, so when you're trying, if they have a food allergy, you have to introduce a novel protein. Okay, so you have to give them something that they don't normally eat, like a fish, or maybe if you could give them pork or some, you know. So, you, I like I suppose the common thing is chicken because it's the common food, but like lots of dogs have allergies to different foods. Okay, sorry. Thank you, ma'am. Another question is, how do we deal with the ivermectin toxicity if it occurs? Oh, oh gosh. Okay, so there is no treatment. Okay, it depends on what state they are. It's supportive treatment. Okay, so bring them into hospital, give them their fluids, try and flush them out. If they're if they're vomiting, anti-vomiting. If they're like in a coma, you have to turn them and support them nutritionally. Um, and like there's no specific not that I'm aware of, um, treatment um, available and really we just have to keep them going until um, they survive or don't okay so yeah good question I honestly I probably have to go quickly quickly look up my book and find out okay okay thank you ma'am the next question yeah. is what is the prevalence of photosensitization in dogs and what are the solutions um, <laughs> Uh, photosensitization. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen it. Okay. Um, so, what is the solution? I think if you're sensitive to the sun, uh, maybe your dog or cat, um, I would put on a sunscreen. Okay. Be careful that you don't have zinc oxide. Um, maybe don't walk them in the daylight. All common, like sensible things. Um, and um, yeah, avoid the sun. That's it. Sorry. Maybe you can wear a nice little jacket. It has to be very inventive to think about it. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I think this is the end of our questions here. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I, uh, thank you so much. I, I hope you got something from it. I, you know, there's a little bit of information about everything. Um, but I suppose the bottom line is just to say that um, itchy skin, you might think, oh, boring itchy skin. But actually, itchy skin can be many, many causes and many solutions. and bottom line is try and reduce the amount of steroids by using all the other things so like your omega-3 and 6s um, and like avoidance avoidance of it your free treatment and uh, be very careful with ivermectin okay and if you have demodex remember it's daily doses okay one injection every week is not going to cure it right thank you very much thank you for all this information Okay, namaste. Uh, namaste, ma'am. I'd like uh, to thank you again for your time and your efforts. You here. Well, I love you. <laughs> okay, now I'd like to end this session. Thank you, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye -bye.